Army ants are some of the most famous ants in the world. Chances are, you're aware that army ants are some of the most aggressive animals in the rainforest of South America. But what you might not know is there are also army ants in North America. And despite being one of the most dominant forces of the dry, sandy habitats of the southern United States, they are rarely seen due to their extremely secretive nature. But are these army ants here nearly as aggressive and impressive as their rainforest counterparts? I'm Mikey Green, and my goal is to show just how little we really know about the strange creatures living their hidden lives all around us. These army ants are what takes me out here into the scrubby hill countries of central Texas, one of the highest hotspots of army ant diversity in the country. To do this, we're flipping rocks to see what all is living underneath them, and ants are far from the only things you can find living underneath these rocks. Nice. Ah, I just fell to the bottom. This is what I have right in here is a gorgeous house centipede. Now this is definitely not something I'm looking for, nor was I expecting to find out here, but I've actually never been able to get a nice up close look at one of these insane and alien looking creatures. And I'm actually gonna let it walk on my hand real quick. Look at these legs. You're used to centipedes having these short little legs and very erratic movements. However, house centipedes are both relatively slow for a centipede and have extremely long legs. And what these are doing probably underneath these rocks is trying to look for tiny little spiders, which I've seen plenty of under these rocks. They use these force appeals, which are these modified front legs that almost look like mandibles to inject venom into their prey. Now, most people would refer to this as a centipede bite, but since it's not actual mouth parts, it is technically a sting since they use their front legs to inject venom. Just look at those amazing legs. What a unique species that I'm super happy to be finding out here, but it's definitely not what I'm looking for. So let's put this little guy back and keep flipping some rocks out here in central Texas. That house centipede was a truly fascinating creature, but they are far from the only predator living underneath these rocks that would be eating right, things like ants. All right, this little guy is not something I was expecting to flip under one of these rocks right here. This is a Gulf Coast toad, which is a native species of toad here in Texas that I have never seen before. And actually, these guys are closely related to the cane toads that I'm used to seeing in Florida. However, unlike the cane toads that are in Florida and invasive, this is native and we like to see it. And I'm not gonna mess with it anymore because amphibians are very sensitive. So let's leave this little Gulf Coast toad to go and keep looking for what we're out here looking for. It seems we've been finding everything but these ants we're looking for. But a trail of ants I thought at first might be just some fire ants turned out to be something much more interesting. Let's see if this is finally what we're out here looking for. This, what I have right in front of me right here, is something that I'm so excited to be finding out here in the arid regions of central Texas. This is a moving colony of army ants. That's right, we have army ants here. You might know of the army ants as the ones deep in the tropical rainforests of Central and South America that make these massive trails covering the ground of the rainforest where anything in sight is in possible danger of getting attacked. And while these colonies and while these trails aren't nearly as impressive and these individual ants aren't nearly as large, they are just as interesting and unique as their cousins down in the rainforest of South America, which they are actually very closely related to. In fact, these are not just army ants by name, they are army ants by taxonomy. Both these and the famous ones out in South America are in the family Dorillinae, which are known as, of course, the army ants. And they form their own separate subfamily within the family Formicidae, which is all ants. And that is because these are some of the most unique ants out there for a variety of very interesting reasons. First, is this distinctive trailing behavior that they have right here. Now they're not just making a trail that forms in a straight line going back and forth for no reason. These are the army ants' raids. Now, of course it's at a much smaller scale than the ones in South America. Army ants as a whole, including these ones right here, are nomadic. Which means that they, unlike lots of other ants, do not pick one singular spot to make their colony. Instead, they will move from spot to spot to spot. Their colonies are not permanent. Now, these army ants seem to have picked a spot. In fact, I think their colony was underneath this rock right here that I flipped. But that is because they pick a colony and stay in there for two to three weeks before becoming nomadic for another few days, finding another colony and moving all their stuff over to a new spot. And they do this, like I said, every two to three weeks. When they stop, 
they usually stop to form their colony underneath a rock or a log on the ground. And that is because these, when they're not trailing looking for food or doing their raids, are very subterranean. That means that these are highly adapted for living an underground lifestyle. So much so that many army ants, including these ones right here, have lost their eyes. They have little to no vision. Some species cannot see at all. Some species have little eye spots that can detect light from dark, but that's it. If you look really closely at this one's head, it's very smooth down the sides. There is not even a little black speck where an eye would. The only individuals of any army ants the only individual army ants that have big eyes capable of good vision are actually the flighted males. The males, when it's their season to fly, come out of the colony in search for a queen to mate with. Now at first, that sounds fairly average for ants, right? The males and the females, the queens, have wings and they fly up and they look for each other, they mate, male dies, female starts a colony. That's not how army ants work. Notice I only said the males, and that is because the queens actually are never born with wings. So unlike your typical ant queen, their thorax, where the wing muscles would usually be, is quite slender just like a worker. And most army ant queens just look like really big versions of the workers. And these workers, for this species and for most army ants in general, are actually polymorphic. There are both minor workers and major workers. In this species, the difference between the majors and the minors is only a size difference. However, some army ants, the majors have these huge heads with these gaping mandibles that help them catch food and defend the colony. However, the queen is even larger than those major workers, but she looks just like a worker. She doesn't even have good vision at all. It's only the males that fly in search for their mates. But identifying them can be fairly difficult. You need to look really close at some of the minor details on these Nava Miramex to tell which species in the genus they are. And Texas is home to quite a large diversity of Nava Miramex. So the reason I said I was actually kind of surprised, even though Texas is home to a large diversity of these, is that they're actually very hard to find. Like I said, they spend most of their time living underground. You usually only see them when they're doing these trails, well, while they're making these trails to do raids and move their colony. Now what's highly unusual is I've actually read that these are mostly nocturnal. They usually do these raids at nighttime. So seeing a trail of army ants during the day is extremely surprising and not how I expected to find these army ants. I've been out here a couple times at night searching these open kind of rocky sandy areas for these army ants because I had a feeling I might find one. They were one of my biggest targets coming out here to Texas. However, this was a huge surprise finding them making a trail in broad daylight. This is exactly what I love about just getting out here and exploring nature. These tiny little unassuming red ants that from a distance might just look like fire ants are actually some of the most interesting and rarely seen animals out here in this ecosystem. Animals that have a variety of unique and truly amazing behaviors that set them apart as one of my favorite ants and one of just the most amazing creatures to possibly be finding out here. And you never know when you might just come across a colony of one of these insane and unique ants. But let's leave this colony alone to keep raiding, keep looking for a new spot to move their colony. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this video right here where in the sandy habitats of my home state of Florida, we find an ant that has an even stranger behavior than these army ants right here. You won't even believe it's real. They collect the heads of other ants. Interested in finding out why? Make sure to check out that video right here, and I'll see you there.